the Netflix original Jessica Jones had just come out, and I wanted to come up with a funny intro for the review. Maybe something about the film noir classic detective style that the show has. Funny intros, they always end with pain. Pain and post-traumatic stress. You try to convince yourself you're a hero. Give the community a few seconds of joy before we all crawl back to the bleak existence of weekly TV shows that don't release all episodes at once. Welcome to Binge Watchers, where we talk about the stories and characters we love and the shows they live in. My name is Ron, and let's talk about season one of the new Netflix original, Jessica Jones. So yesterday I spent all day binge watching Jessica Jones, and then I was tired, so I went to sleep, but now I'm up and I'm here to talk about it. Jessica Jones, in a lot of ways, feels like the successor of Daredevil. They did a great job at making you feel that the show takes place in the same universe, same time, same city. The general art, the general look and feel of the show feels very much much like it did in Daredevil, it is, however, a very different show. Jessica Jones is a much more personal story, and the scale of the story grows as people inevitably get caught in the crossfire. Jessica, at this point of her life, is a private investigator, and the show has a very distinct film noir, old detective movie kind of style to it, which I was personally a very big fan of. You can feel it in the cinematography and in the music, especially in scenes where Jessica herself is involved. This show is very much not an origin story. It seems to understand very well that at this point of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we're pretty much done with origin stories. The show does have to tell us two stories at a time though. We need to see the actual present day story unfold, but we also need to understand where Jessica's PTSD comes from and what made her the way she is today. And I felt that the show pulls that off completely. There's this thing that they say about writing, is this the most interesting time of uh, this character's life? And if it's not, why aren't you showing us that? So I did always feel that I'm watching the most important and most interesting point of Jessica's life while still getting enough information about her background and things that happened earlier. Something I imagine that most people who watch this show will agree on, whether they like the show or not, is that David Tennant plays a menacing, terrifying, effective villain. And his performance is one of the best things I've seen lately. It's very easy to automatically praise Tennant's performance just because he is, well, David Tennant, but he really does nail it in this one and he deserves the praise. The show definitely deals with the questions of what it means to be a hero or what it means to be a villain, but it didn't feel like a superhero show. The show focuses on the story and the characters who drive that story, but not on the fact that some of the characters in this cast have superpowers. Personally, that was something that I appreciated and really liked. True, having powers is a huge part of Kilgrave's character, but he still didn't feel like a, a gimmicky, one-dimensional character that was only there to create cool superpower scenes. Am I making sense? He still felt like he drove the story as a character. Yes, who drove the story as a character? Who drove the story as a character? Yes, you did. You drove the story as a character. My wife just gave me the weirdest of looks. Jessica herself, I felt, was a very unique character. They managed to do something pretty great with her, and that is to make her a multidimensional, well-rounded character, giving her a love interest, but still making sure that she stays a strong protagonist. The fact that she might want a relationship in the future or have feelings for someone doesn't necessarily make her weak. Unfortunately, in a lot of shows, movies, and video games where you have a strong female lead, the story tends to reduce her to a dependent on a strong male character um, in order to strengthen a love story or something like that. Here, you have both a strong male character and a strong female character, and they don't have to overpower one another. They can both occupy the same space at the same time, which is more than I can say for a lot of shows, and just works perfectly here. Unlike Daredevil, where the show was as much about the villain as it was about the hero, Jessica Jones is about Jessica Jones. I actually wish that they focused a bit more on Kilgrave himself, as a character. I get that that would be harder to do since Wilson Fisk is a much more complicated character while Kilgrave is more of a classic evil villain, but I still feel that more of Kilgrave um, separate from Jessica Jones would strengthen the show. Overall, my opinions about this show are very positive. I had a great time watching the show and I enjoyed it 
deeply. I think the main things that I didn't care for as much about the show are some of the fight scenes and some of the side stories. This show is extremely violent and sexual and graphic, which all fits very well into the dark world of Netflix Marvel shows. And just like in Daredevil, it always serves the story very well. And exactly because of that, it felt weird that some of the fight scenes were a bit cartoony, I guess? I mean, with Daredevil, it's martial arts driven fight scenes, and I get that, and that was awesome. Here, I really like the fact that Jessica doesn't do martial arts, she doesn't need to because she has super strength, but some of these fight scenes where she throws someone across the room and it's shot in a Xena the Warrior Princess kind of style felt really out of place. Some of the action scenes were really good. The action really wasn't the strongest suit of this show, but I guess that the super strength fight scenes felt kind of weird and out of place. It felt like one person did the rest of the show and then another person did the super strength fight scene. It's not that big of a deal though. The other thing was the side stories. Anything that wasn't directly connected into the main Jessica Jones story, they just weren't as good and I often found myself kind of wandering away in those scenes. Especially that guy that kept saying, my boys, my boys, watch the show. You'll know who I'm talking about. My boys! So there's one more thing I feel that we need to address before we wrap this up. I went through some of the earlier reviews that uh, already went up on Netflix about Jessica Jones, and holy crap, this is sensate all over again. People complaining about liberal and gay and feminist propaganda, and the show going for shock value with the interracial love story, now I know, I know, these are just racist assholes that refuse to join the rest of us here in 2015 and we shouldn't even waste our time responding to them. But do you guys even understand what propaganda is? Propaganda is spreading information about a cause. If the thing that Netflix originals are spreading information about is the fact that it's perfectly fine for any two consenting adults to be in a relationship, or the fact that a female lead can carry a multi-million dollar production just as well as a male lead, or the fact that it's not an interracial love story, it's a love story, an interracial love story would be Jessica Jones and a horse, if that's the propaganda you're so scared of, then I say Netflix for freaking president and I can't get enough of it, you homophobic, racist, ancient asshole. And don't forget ignorant. Bottom line, should you watch it? Jessica Jones is a very dark, violent show with a great, great cast and some really incredible performances. The story itself isn't very intricate or complex, it's very straightforward and mostly very satisfying, although some of the side stories sometimes feel like uh, unnecessary distractions. I feel that Daredevil is generally still the stronger show and is still the flagship, but Jessica Jones is still a very enjoyable, great show that is very much worth your time as you venture through the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I personally had a lot of fun with it. Well, that felt like a very long video. I'm sorry about that. So what did you think about Jessica Jones and how do you feel that it stacks up against the other comic book shows? And what is your message for those very special people I addressed earlier? If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps out a lot. And if you're finding binge watchers for the first time, welcome. I'd like to invite you to join the binge watchers community where we're talking about TV every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with reviews and sketches and discussions and opinions and all kinds of great things all for you fellow binge watchers and TV lovers. So you can go ahead and click on that big subscribe button to join in on the fun. You can check out any of the other videos on the channel. If you want to talk about anything else, you can check out my personal channel. In any case, keep binging and I will see you next time.